although it's out of sight, and the same applies to every masculine. Although it's hard to hide when you're connected, and when the masculine crucified. tapping on his back, playfully with my fingers. My right arm rubbed his left discreetly. He turned to me and half smiled and said, this is one of those times I really need human contact and it really pisses me off that we can't hold hands. It's been a hell of a weekend. Our friends Nick and Brett are in town. We've known each other for a long time, and this is really the first opportunity we've had to spend a lot of time together. It's strange how much we all have in common. Uh, they're our age. They like old TV shows. They like old ladies. They're nerds like me and Kevin. Uh, they've been together forever like me and Kevin. They're married like me and Kevin. They bicker in front of people like me and Kevin. They're staying with us while Nick competes in the Gay Games Triathlon. They're from that mystical, faraway <clears throat> land called Chicago, <laughs> where their marriage is legal. While they're here, it's not. It's strange. On the flip side, our dog Lucy has been at the emergency vet since yesterday morning, and they haven't been able to get her stabilized yet. But the Gay Games are in town. So we attend the opening ceremonies, uh, the Festival of Village, the Festival of Lights on Mall C, on Lakeside, overlooking the lake. And if you remember, uh, there was a rainbow light display that was beamed over downtown Cleveland. And the night we went, Nick took a selfie of the rainbow shooting out of his mouth, and I bent over so the rainbow could be farted out of my ass. It was gay. <laughs> yeah. Gay, 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 everywhere. People together, out in the open in this city. It felt like more than pride to be spending that time with really good friends and to be posing for photos with another two guys who just happened to be married. I mean, we were standing in a place where five years ago, one year ago, yesterday, this would not and could not have happened without fear of reprisal. But not this night standing in the middle of Moss Sea, watching the lake, <coughs> and holding my husband's hand. Warm. Fresh baked chocolate chip cookies and white diamonds. Always white diamonds. 2011, I'm kneeling in front of the couch in my grandmother's front room. I'm holding her hand and feeling her quickening pulse. I'm holding her hand like when we would walk to the corner mailbox to pay her bills or walk to the corner deli or into Children's Palace. Her hand tells me why she needs me at her side. She's scared. Flooding pulse. Nothing. Flooding pulse. Nothing. Flooding pulse. Holding her hand at the moment her body died was the most tremendous gift I've ever been given. A few days before she died, my mom had to make the funeral arrangements and write the obituary. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. She told me that spouses would be listed in the obit, so that would be her third husband, my aunt's second husband, my uncle's second wife, and Kevin, <coughs> my only husband. She told me his name would be listed next to mine and how proud Grandma would be of that. After Grandma died, my uncle's power of attorney kicked in, and he took one look at the obit and saw Kevin's name and said, get this out of here. 
Nobody needs to know she has a gay grandson. Boy, did he get mad when I gave my eulogy. <laughs> Back in uh, 2014, our Gay Games weekend has taken a turn for the worse. Uh, the vet called back about Lucy. They still have not been able to get her stabilized, and we're not getting her back today, but at least we haven't lost her. It's been a weekend full of emotional highs, of laughing, of eating pasta, and just bickering with friends, and emotional lows of sleepless nights, being too worried to eat, Kevin and I making tough decisions together. We haven't felt this close in a long time. A unit. We go to the store. We were walking in a fog past the one dollar bins. That blue scarf is nice. A box of cinnamon toast crunch that used to taste good in childhood. We don't need razors. We don't need dog poop bags. We don't need guac, but we do need Greek yogurt. Ben and Jerry's. Maricone dream. He says, this is one of those times I really need human contact, and it really <coughs> pisses me off that we can't hold hands. And I think, why can't we hold hands? The only thing stopping us is us. There is nobody here to physically put an end to anything, and we've been together 14 goddamn years. Hold his goddamn hand. But there are eyes everywhere. And so he's reaching into the freezer and putting what we need into the basket, and the clock on this moment is ticking. And I'm checking the glass-paneled freezer doors for reflections. Clear. I start rubbing his arm. Slow and steady. He sighs and smiles. Move to his shoulder. I start tapping on his back playfully with my fingers. He looks at me and smiles. I start rubbing his back back up to his shoulder, to his bicep. I'm checking the glass panel freezer door. We're clear. I move to his forearm. And the freezer door closes and we walk away. The moment passed. I hold his hand when we're alone in the car. Ten minutes later, just like when, when we were in the middle of Moss Sea, watching the lake.
My mom and I, we live alone. A grand apartment is our home. <coughs> in Fair Home Towers. I have to keep me company. Two cats, a dog, a parakeet. Some plants and flowers. I help my mother with the chores. I wash, she dries. I do the floors. We work together. I cook and shop and sew a bit. Though mom does too, I must admit. I do it better. At night, I work in a strange bar. Impersonating every star. I'm quite deceiving. The customers come in with doubt and wonder what I'm all about. But leave believing. I do a very special show where I am nude from head to toe. Each night the men look so surprised I change my sex Before their eyes Tell me if you can What makes a man a Around three o'clock or so, I meet with friends to grab a bite to eat. And conversation. We talk and empty out our hearts on every subject from the arts to liberation. We love to pull apart someone or spread some gossip just for fun. Or start a rumor. We let our hair down, so to speak, and mock ourselves with tongue-in-cheek and inside humor. So many times we have to pay for having fun and being gay. It's not amusing. There's always those to spoil our games by finding fault and calling names. Always accusing. They draw attention to themselves at the expense of someone else. It's so confusing. Yet they make fun of how I walk and imitate the way I talk. What makes a man a man? My masquerade comes to an end When I go home to bed again Alone and friendless I close my eyes and think of him And fantasize what might have been My dreams are endless We love each other But it seems this love lives only in my dreams. It's all one-sided. Yet in this life, I must confess, 
the search for love and happiness is unrequited. I ask myself, what have I got? And what I am, and what I'm not, what am I giving? Yet answers come from those who make the rules that some of us must break just to keep living. I know my life is not a crime, I'm just a victim. I stand defenseless. But nobody nobody has the right to be the judge of what is right for me. Man.